chapter number 17 <clears throat> and verse number 1. 1 Kings 17 and verse number 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Father, we thank you for thy word today. God, I pray that you bless it. God, are already, God, just have read the word of God. Lord, we know that that is a blessing. And we thank you, Lord, for the bread of life. And I pray, God, you'd help us. Lord, I pray, forgive me of my sins. God, come around behind this pulpit, Father, and take over this place this morning. And I pray, God, that you'd move around these aisles, God. Lord, around these pews, God, and speak to our hearts by the Spirit of God. Rebuke the devil from us. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. As we began last week on this study of Elijah, uh, we didn't get too far, and I'm going to have to go over a couple of things that uh, we might have missed last week. And so we find out that this man, Elijah, was a man just like you and me. Ladies, men, he's just like us. Elijah was just a man. We don't know a whole lot about him. He was a Tishbite. Uh, we find that his ministry is, is not very long. Uh, he pops up out of nowhere in the scripture, so to speak, but he has his, his messages carry on even into the New Testament especially in the book of James. So we find out that Elijah was a very important man in Scripture, but he was just a man. Now, sometimes we as believers have t the tendency to see those that are uh, seemingly to be more in the spotlight than those that are not, and we seem to think that there's some, uh, something uh, special about them. But I'm telling you what, friend, we're in all, the, all of, the, of us are in this together, and God has, there's, in, in God's service, there's no big eyes and little news. Uh, there are all those servants of God. And I'm of the opinion that anyone can be an Elijah, that anyone can be a Paul, that anyone can be James or John or any of those others if they're wholly committed to the Lord. Now, we find this about Elijah, that he was just a man like ourselves. Uh, we don't know about his upbringing, but he must have had a pretty good mom and daddy. Amen. He must have raised him and trained him up in the way that he should go. We know that he was living in a day as we are today, in a day of spiritual decline and apostasy. We know he was living in a day of backslidden believers. He was living in a day where idols were worshipped more than God was worshipped. Uh, where where uh, Baal was, uh, people were worshiping Baal and, and uh, many other false gods they were worshiping in that day. And the children of Israel had turned from God. And so it was such a day when there was a great backsliding, a great falling away, and a great day of apostasy in Elijah's day, something uh, such as we're living in today. It was also a, a the lot of Elijah... Uh, that he would be asked to perform some very difficult things for God. Some very difficult things Elijah was asked to do for the Lord, but nothing that God asked him to do was he unable to do it. Amen? And I'll tell you today, friend, if God puts something before you to do, there is nothing that God will ask you to do that he will not equip you and give you uh, the, the way and the direction to do it in service for him. But we've got to be in the way of the Lord. Amen? We've got to be in hearing distance of Him. And we've got to be on the receptive end of hearing what God wants us to do and be willing, as Elijah was willing, and be able, as, as God enabled Elijah, to do the service of the Lord. So he was asked to do some great things and some miraculous things. But all that he did, he did it because God uh, was with him. 
And so we know that he was, uh, uh, you know, given these hard tasks to do, that which we will cover as the messages go on. And his life was a life that was separated to the call of God. It was separated life to complete dedication to the Lord. That's where most of us run into our snags is in our dedication to the Lord, our faithfulness to God, our willingness to do what God wants us to do. If we are faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. If we're willing to do what God wants uh, us to do, God will use us faithfully. He will use us in a great way, in a great fashion, but it depends on whether or not we are dedicated to do the work of God. Elijah was. Not many in that day were. There were more than Elijah, and we'll find that out later. But not many were dedicated to serving the Lord as it is today. Not many people are wholly dedicated to serving the Lord in these last days we're living in. Friend, if we're going to have revival, and I believe God wants to do it for us, if we're going to have revival, we're going to have to wholly dedicate ourselves to God and to his work. Amen. We're going to have to give ourselves completely to the work of the Lord and give ourselves completely to his service and forget this world, amen, and, in, and know that there is coming a day when we'll leave this world and go into the presence of God and what a day that'll be, amen. But if we're to live in this world and have a enjoy a Christian life that God wants us to, we're going to have to be separated unto the Lord and dedicated unto him. And also we see that uh, his life was known for its supernatural acts in his life. The supernatural things that God did through him. And friend, I'm telling you, God is not beyond working supernatural acts today. If we'll trust him, if we'll learn from him, if we'll live for him, if we'll serve him, if we'll be obedient, God will do supernatural things through and by us. Amen? Then we also see that uh, Elijah was const constantly... Uh, living in the presence and relied upon God's Spirit. He was constantly living after the Spirit of God. Now I find myself every day, more than once, begging God to help me to walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. Now I'm going to admit something to you this morning. I've been having a difficult time here lately. Seems like hell has come by the acres. And it ain't nothing you can see. It ain't nothing you can put your finger on. But it seems like the devil wants to do it, is doing his best to discourage the people of God. Now, I'm not the only one facing having issues, having problems. We call them issues. Well, sometimes that's good and bad. I've got some good issues, but I've got some bad issues. And sometimes it seems like God has, has gone away. But he's not. And Elijah faced such things as you and I face. And he relied upon the strength of God to see him through. And friend, I'll tell you today, the longer we go in this life, the wickeder this world gets, and the more evil this world gets, and the bolder the devil gets in fighting God's people, we're going to face problems. But there's nothing that in the strength of God we can't overcome. Amen? Amen. So I'm, I'm going to tell you something. As your pastor, I'm asking for your prayers today. I, the, the, I don't want the devil to win. Amen. I'm, I'll fight tooth and nail. Amen. If my teeth fall out, I'm going to gum him. Amen. Until Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe we ought to be strong in the power of the might of God. But listen, if you set out to serve the Lord, don't you expect to get by easy. Don't you expect to get by without a fight from, from the devil because he wants nothing. None of us to serve him and do the will of God. But Elijah, he, you know, we're going to be ashamed of ourselves probably after we learn how Elijah relied upon the Lord. But Elijah, again, was just a man. He relied upon the presence and the, and the strength of God's work. The story of Elijah, it revolves around two commandments from God in particular. Number one, it revolves on, on this fact that God told Elijah to go hide thyself. Why go hide himself? Well, what did he just told Ahab? Boldly he went and stood before Ahab. He didn't preach it to the world. He went and stood eye to eye with, the, with Ahab 
Dennis was what happened to Dennis. He got on. I used him last week, and he there he is right there. Come back up here, Dennis. Come back up here, Dennis. Come here, Dennis. Dennis, big old fella. Hey, Al, I don't believe was a little scrawny man. I believe he's a big old fella. Elijah, I don't know how big he was, but he, this this could be a mean man. I don't know him real well. You know, sitting in church, and I don't know his face, but I bet it could be a real mean man if you needed to, sister. Can you be? Yeah, she's shaking her head. Yeah, you could be a real, real mean man. Well, let me get down here where I can get eyeball to eyeball. And he looked at Ahab. I'm calling Ahab. So from now on, his nickname's Ahab around the church, okay? No, don't do that. Then you'd be wanting Well, anyway, we'll, we'll not go there. But he looked at Ahab and said, Ahab, it ain't going to rain except for my word. It's not going to rain anymore. And Ahab looked at him, probably didn't say a word. You go ahead. He probably didn't say a word, but he looked at him eyeball to eyeball, and he told him it wasn't going to rain except by his word, and guess what? It never rained another drop. Now, he said, go hide thyself. That was a command of God that Elijah must do. Now, he could have went around town saying, hey, look like you here. Did you see me go get in Ahab's face and tell him that it wasn't going to rain no more? I ain't afraid of Ahab. Now, he might have could have done that. It might have been so that he, God gave him boldness to go before the king and say, look, Ahab, it ain't going to rain no more. Now, I don't know where Jezebel was at at that time, but she got word of all of it. I'm sure he went back and whined to her. You know what? That Elijah said, it ain't going to rain no more. So to protect Elijah and to protect him from the next coming days, God said, now, Elijah, You've done what I told you to do. Now you've got to do something else. You've got to go hide yourself. So <coughs> he told him to go hide it. <coughs> Excuse me. Go hide himself. And guess what he did? He went and hid himself. Number two, he had to, God told him to do this. Go show thyself. So he had to do two things. He had to hide when God said to hide. And when God said go show yourself, he had to go show himself. But the, what he had to do was be obedient to God, being obedient to him at all times and in all things. Now, he said, Elijah, you go hide yourself, and you go, go hide to the brook of Cherith. Go hide yourself there. Now, there's been a lot of discussion among the commentators on these next few verses of what Elijah is told to do and how God does what he does. But I'm going to tell you something. The easiest thing for me to believe is what the Word of God says and not try to make it anything that it's not. Amen? Amen. So what does God say? He tells him, he says, and, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Go thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. That's all he tells him. He don't say, Now, Elijah, go pack up your, your Mountain Dew and your Pepsi and your, uh, your little picnic basket full of your of you uh, uh, prepared meals and you peanut butter and you bread and, and put all you can in the box and, and carry all you can with you because you're going to need it and, and you go on what I tell you to do. No, he said, Elijah, you go hide yourself and you go to the brook chariot and you hide yourself there. Now, it's even, nobody knows exactly where this brook was at, but guess who did? Elijah did. Elijah knew where that brook was at and so off he goes. With what the clothes he had on his back. He reminds me of, of the New Testament, John the Baptist. And he reminds me of being that kind of man that could survive. There's a lot of talk going on the world in, in uh, the country today about being survival uh, you know, experts and how to get along if you're off the grid and if the power goes down. And uh, I'm a little bit that way myself. I know what I can do and what I can't do, and I've got some things I know I think I could live for at least a couple of days, amen, without any electricity. But I've got this little thing that I've got together that tells me all the things that you need to do, you know. You say, preacher, you're crazy. Yeah, I probably am. But, if, but I've, got the, I've got some of the knowledge. If I have to live that way, and God's, God says, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go back and take all them notes you've made. And, now, and if he does, I've got them. If he don't, if he just says, you trust me, I'm going to try to just trust God. Amen? Amen. Nothing wrong with preparation. But Elijah, he had all those techniques, I believe. And he said, well, Lord, I don't know what, I'm going, what you're going to do with me, but off I go to the brook chair. 
Now, I can imagine Elijah tromping through the woods with his staff. And I can imagine him going through there. I can imagine, now, where am I going to hide? Here's the brook Cherith. Nobody knows where this is at, but he said, I'll find me a hiding place. And I understand that in that, well, I've been there. In that part of it, the, there's a lot of caves and a lot of places you can hide out. And so he found him a place to hide and set himself down there. Now, let me remind you, you're going to, you young ones are going to say, and you adults are going to say, what in the world did he do? He didn't have iPad. He didn't have an iPhone. He didn't have video games. He didn't have a TV. He didn't have a radio. What in the world did Elijah do? I'm telling you what he done. He had no problem finding things to do. Amen? I don't believe he was bored one bit. I believe just uh, just uh, enjoying nature. I love to do that. I can get out without nothing and just enjoy the goodness of God. Amen? But, it, but Elijah got out there and he sat himself down and said, all right, Lord, now what? I don't believe he acted haphazardly. I believe he probably found his place to stay and, and uh, you know, made him a comfortable place to lay down maybe. But he said, now what? He said, here's what the Lord said. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. You know what raven, ravens eat? carry on. They eat the leftover. They eat what the hyenas have left behind. What the coyotes have left laying on the ground. They eat roadkill. You understand that more, don't you? But now he commanded the ravens were considered an unclean thing. Now, here's where the difficulty is at and where people have had trouble accepting this story is because the ravens were unclean. But listen, God can use anything to supply for man what he wants to supply for man. I've got no problem with the ravens bringing him food. It wasn't nothing. Listen, it wasn't nothing that would harm Elijah. It was for his benefit. It was for his good. <coughs> and I don't believe God did one thing, uh, you know, that would harm Elijah. He said the ravens are going to come feed. Now, there's some that's trying to stretch this out into a, a people of... of uh, uh, of uh, what do you call these people that roam around? Uh, no, uh, uh, what's that? Yeah, 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 they're them people. Said it was them that came by and they fed him. Well, buddy, I won't tell you what. They weren't Baptists, they did. I, I, we're re very good around here, but it'd be hard to get somebody to go and feed somebody twice a day, amen, every day for over a year at the same time. So whatever it was, it wasn't man, it was the ravens. So just believe it. Just take the word of God for what it is and just believe it. And so the ravens came in the morning. Here they came with, with, uh, with bread and flesh. And here they come in the evening. He said, what he said? I have commanded the ravens to feed, he, feed thee. So he went, he went, listen, Elijah now, he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the book, chariot, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Well, that don't sound too bad, does it? Now, I don't believe he just sat there. He, he got up and he probably made things as comfortable for himself as he could around there with what he had to get. But he'd come morning time, he'd get up and, oh, I'm going to get breakfast. And went out there and there's the raven sitting there, got him some bread and got him some. Where did they get that? Amen. I don't know. Does it really matter? No. Now, we're talking to a God in heaven, amen, that puts the stars up there in the sky. Surely God can give a raven a piece of bread and, uh, or the ravens a piece, some pieces of bread and some, some good clean meat. I don't know. He may have went back to Ahab. They may have flew back to Ahab's palace and stole their food. I don't know. But, he, hey, man, he ate good. Bread and the flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening. And so he did that, and he drank of the brook, that good cool water out of that brook. What is God doing? God is supplying the needs of Elijah. He had a place to sleep. He had a place to stay, uh, you know, stay comfortable. He had a place uh, that he was protected uh, from, the, from Ahab. God said, I shall supply all thine, thy needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And it was good in Elijah's day. It's good in our day. So God supplied his needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So there's Elijah. He's having a pretty good time, isn't he? Now look, after some time, probably about a year, the brook dried up. 
Here's where Elijah's faith comes into action again. And don't you know Elijah was going to school for a year learning about what God was going to do? Don't you know Elijah meditated on the things of the Lord daily? Enjoyed the good things of God out in nature daily. And nothing wrong with that. I like that. But he was learning of the Lord. Now, we're in trouble. I, I've been introducing this message for two weeks. I mean, two weeks I've been introducing. And it gets better and better. Every time I study it, it gets better and better. Because Elijah was a man like me that God did extraordinary things because he was willing to be used of God. Amen. That's it. Now, let's look at a few things real quick. Number one, we see that Elijah, from these verses that we read to you, Elijah was one that heard the voice of the Lord. He heard his voice. He was close enough to hear his voice. Oh, friend, that we would be close enough to God that we would hear his voice and live in such closeness to God that we'll be able to hear him and be able to uh, do what God wants us to do simply by hearing his voice. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. Now, how he spoke to him exactly, I don't know. It, then God spoke sometimes with an audible voice. Sometimes God sent an angel, uh, the angel of the Lord even, to speak to people. But however it was, we know that the Lord God he told Elijah what to do. Listen, if we'll live close to God, we won't have no trouble understanding what God wants us to do in our life. Amen? Whether it be through the word of God or that still small voice inside of us, amen, we live close to God, we will be able to hear the voice of God and his leading in our life. I'm hurrying. We know that, God, that Elijah received a promise from God. I'm going to take care of you. Do what I want you to do, and I'm going to take care of you. God's promise is always a certainty. He said, it shall be. He told Elijah, it shall be. And when he said, it shall be, it was. Amen? When God commands us, and when, God, uh, when we follow after God, when God says something that he's going to do in our life, God always does. And what God says he will do will always be sufficient for us. My grace is sufficient for thee. Listen, you may, you, listen, you may have a lot of, of disrespect for the way this world's going, but I want to tell you I'm not relying on this world for my sufficiency. I'm relying upon God. Amen. And God will be sufficient and the time of God in our lives that we live and serve him and do his will, God will always be sufficient. He will always supply for us. His grace is sufficient. Now there were some conditions on what, uh, on the promises that Elijah received of God. There was conditions to that and that condition was if you will. You do what I say, and I will do what I say. We be obedient to God. God will be obedient to, to the things that he's promised to do for us. And God won't withhold any good thing from those that serve him and do his will. Oh, my friend, today, if we'll do what God wants us to do, if we'll be bold like Elijah was, if we'll do everything God wants us to do, there's no telling what God will do with this church, and there's no telling what God will do with you as individuals. If we'll be Elijah's and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be obedient. God help me. Amen. Boy, we'll see revival like we've never experienced in our lifetime. If we'll just be obedient to God. And then we see that Elijah showed obedience to the Lord in, the, in what God did for him. Elijah showed obedience to, obedience to the Lord. He went and he did what God said for him to do. He said, go tell Ahab it ain't going to rain. He went and done it. Go hide thyself in the brook Cherith. He went and done it. Go get you food from the ravens. He went and did it. Drink from the brook. That's what he done. He was obedient to what God said to do. He was instant. He didn't wait around. When 
When Elijah was called upon the scene, I believe that immediately he went to Ahab when God called him, told him to do that. He, he, he went and did it right away. He was instant. Listen, we don't need to put off what God says to do. We don't need to put off till tomorrow what God says to do today. Because one more day, friend, is one more day lost. One more minute is one more minute lost. I figured out the other day, you know, I'm, go I'm getting older. I limped around for three or four days. My knee swelled up twice as big as the other. And uh, I was told to go to the doctor by a good person in the church. And I said, I'm going Wednesday. And uh, she nodded her head at me. And so Wednesday's going to come along. I've got to go anyway. And, uh, but I'm not going to have to tell them about my knee because somebody prayed about it, amen, and it went down. It's not... But I got, you know what that is? What's the matter with it? I don't know. I'm getting old. Things don't work like they used to. But you know what? No matter what goes on, no matter how old I get, amen, I still need be, to be obedient to God and do instantly what he says for me to do right then. Just go ahead and do it. <coughs> and he showed also complete obedience. Did everything God said to do. Lord, help me. I'm, God, help me to do everything God wants me to do. Man, God, help us to do everything God wants us to do. Uh, let me ask you, are you willing to do that? Now, you nod your head, you shake your head, you do what? But listen, if it don't come from down here, it don't make a hill of beans difference. You ain't heard that word in a while, have you? It doesn't make a hill of beans difference if you don't mean it from your heart. If in the still small still of the night and a small voice to you that comes to you and says you do this <coughs> you might not have tomorrow you better do it today friends you better do it we better be obedient to God then what Elijah did he did it unquestionably he never asked God why and sometimes I want to ask, ask God Lord why Lord why is this person facing this why is that per family going through they, those problems why did they lose that loved one? Why have you allowed this to happen? Lord, why? But he never questioned God because he knew he was in the will of God. And friend, if you're, you know, listen, there's things going on in my life and I'll never know why it happened. But it's in the will of God, so I know it's in the plan of God. Amen. And I chalk it up to experience and go on. Amen. I've learned this that not every, every time I, I get sick, if I've done something wrong, every time you get sick or some affliction comes upon you, it don't mean you've done anything wrong. It just means that it's God's will and God's plan in your life, and we accept it and go on. I'm sure Elijah probably didn't understand it all, but he accepted it with unquestioning. He didn't question God. He just went and did what God told him to do. Friend, if you're going to be what you're going to be for God, we need to do what God says without question. Amen. Then we see the supply that he enjoyed. Oh, I, he did what God wanted him to do. And look what God said. He said, I will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. He enjoyed the supply of God because he was obedient to do all the things that God said for him to do. What, where he got what he got, where God supplied was from God himself. He said, I'll send the ravens to bring you bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and you can drink of the brook. God said he would supply it, and he did. What God did and the way God did it was a, was a miracle. How many of you have been sitting out on your front porch of a morning, and here come two ravens, by and brought you, brought you a, a piece of bread and some meat? Anybody? What would you do with that?
a miracle in my life. Do you ever not feel like getting out of the bed? Come on, be honest. Whether it's physical or whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, do you ever feel like just not getting out of the bed? <laughs> Lord, just let me stay in the bed. Just, I don't want to face it today. I don't want to, I don't want to bother, be bothered with nothing today. God, just let me lay here in the bed and sleep today. It don't work that way, friend. Sometimes I take my right foot and I kick myself in the left foot till it's over the side of the bed. And then I take the back of my hand and grab the back of my head and I jerk my head up off the pillow and hope that that dog will nip on me so I'll get out of the bed. Now, you ain't none of you ever had issues like that, but I'm just going to tell you, sometimes it takes almost that to just to get me going during the day because I don't want to do it. Now, what I'm doing is opening myself up to you this morning and letting you know that I know how you feel when you wish that you could just not go through the day. It may be because every bone in your body aches, or it may be because that there's things going in your life that you just don't want to face, you just don't want to deal with. But I'm telling you what, hallelujah, God was with Elijah, and he'll be with you. Amen. So he enjoyed everything that God gave him, and he enjoyed its sufficiency. And then, last of all, we see that he... Of all this experience, we see that he was tested. Now, for a year now, or about, or about a year, Elijah sat there every day, enjoying the. He probably got, don't you think he probably got pretty used to that? Probably gained a few pounds. Had the food coming regular. Got about his daily routine, things that he was doing, whatever it was, I don't know. I'll ask him when I get to heaven, sit down with him. I say, Elijah, how in the world did you make it all that time without your iPhone? <laughs> and I'm sure he'll tell me, you know, I'm sure that I'll get a good lesson on, on how he went through all of that. If it matters to me when I get to heaven, it may not even matter. But I'm curious as to what all he did. But it come time when he was tested. <clears throat> he got up one morning. Sat down on his, probably had him a table for then. I'm just imagining Brett Fleet's old style. Sat down at his table, his rock table. And Ray was late this morning. seemingly and nothing ever goes wrong then all of a sudden it dries up and we're tested in our spiritual life but you remember the two things that Elijah done was he heard and he did what God said to do and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. The brook dried up, the ravens quit coming, the bread quit coming. 
So what is God doing? He's planning to lead him in another direction. Amen. So listen, if God ever shakes your life up and says, I want you to do this, you be a Elijah and say, you, I will, and God, you help me and I'll do it, whatever it is, and you go on for the Lord into greater things that God's got for you. Another couple of verses, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. I've got somebody to take care of you, Elijah. The ravens are gone. The brook's dried up. But you trust me, and you do what I say, and you're still going to be supplied for. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, my friend, today, he that dwelleth, Psalms 91, 1, in closing, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Where did you trust that today? Look around. If it's in this world, I'm sorry for you. If it's in the politics of this world, I'm real sorry for you. If it's in the politicians of this world, oh, I'm so sorry for you. But if your hope is in God, if your hope is in his plan, if your hope is in his word, amen, hallelujah, God in heaven is going to see us through. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God this morning. Lord, I thank you for your help. God, I pray, God, that you bless us and help us together. God, help us, Lord, that we'd see revival. God, I pray that you'd send us a stir, send us a move of God in our presence. Lord, help us, Lord, to do what you want us to do as Elijah did. Lord, in this, in this fierce day of evil that we live in, God, help us to be Elijah's and serve you and do your will without question. Not regarding the cost, not regarding the consequences. Help us, Lord, to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around.